The question standing in my name on the order paper. I appreciate the concern with this. The reality is that there are a lot of factors at play and universal credit is not the sole issue. Many people are coming into universal credit with pre-existing arrears. Safeguards are in place for claimants including advances, budgeting support and alternative payment arrangement and research shows that over time claimants successfully reduce their arrears. I've commissioned work from the department to help understand the true level and causes of these arrears. I thank the Minister for uh, his reply, but he will be aware of the survey conducted by the National Federation of Almos and Arch, which was detailing the shocking build-up of rent arrears by council tenants. Uh, those covered by the survey, 79% uh, were, uh, in receipt of, were in receipt of uh, universal credit uh, were in arrears, and only half of those previously had uh, been in arrears. Despite what the Noble Lord says, it seems that the rollout of uni universal credit is causing a build-up of debt amongst social tenants, creating financial hardship and reportedly driving some into the arms of the uh, lo loan sharks. And it's not surprising, uh, given uh, the long processing times um, and the recently introduced imposition of a further seven-day waiting period uh, before the uh, benefit can kick in, an imposition imposed uh, opposed by the Social Security Advisory Committee. Uh, so can I ask the Minister, as the rollout of universal credit is to widen, would he agree uh, that these arrangements have to be reviewed urgently from the point of view of both landlords uh, and tenants and the seven-day waiting period scrapped? The best evidence I've got at the moment is our uh, gateway review, which shows that um, a rather high figure, 48% of people on, of the singles on UC uh, have got uh, arrears, but interestingly, half of those uh, have them, uh, they were, were pre-existing arrears. Um, that compares with 31%, so it's higher, it, it, it's, it's higher. But the interesting thing is how much, how quickly it comes down. So on the, on the second wave, I, three months later, it comes right down to very close to the JSA figure. Uh, so look, there's a lot of complexity here. Um, uh, it is not straightforward at all. I am looking at it with some urgency. Um, uh, during the passage of the uh, recent Welfare Act, the government were warned by several neighbourhood uh, lords around the, uh, uh, the chamber that if they didn't allow tenants to choose to have the rental part of their universal credit paid direct to the landlord, then rent arrears would increase. As the noble lord, Lord Mackenzie, has just said, uh, they are increasing dramatically. But at the time, the government said no. Why can the universal credit be paid direct to look, uh, directly to mortgage lenders for mortgage interest, but tenants can't choose to have the payment made directly to their landlord? What we are aiming to do with universal credit, and there is evidence of, of success in this, is we're trying to get people to take control of their own lives, and it makes it much more difficult for people to switch to going into work if they have got um, their rental uh, um, situation locked up in a dependency situation. So we are aiming to get people, free people from that so they can move into work and there, is a, uh, there are good signs that we are, are being successful on getting people into work. My Lords, the, 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 minister's, the Minister's announcement that he's undertaking a review is very welcome. Uh, but will he include the evidence that um, Lord Mackenzie has just put forward about the increasing incidence of rent arrears? Um, we need to make sure that this is uh, merely a short-term spike and not a long-term trend. Um, and secondly, in the course of his um, researches, uh, will he look into um, uh, why the safety net measures to which he referred that are built into the design of universal credit appear to be failing in this instance, because that's important. This is the biggest change programme that Her Majesty's Government are bringing forward by a country mile. It is mission critical for the United Kingdom, particularly after Brexit, and it's important that we get it right. Yeah. I absolutely accept we need to get it right. I'm spending quite a lot of time with the Almos. I, I was, I was, uh, I've had a couple of meetings with 
with them, uh, Eamon McGoldrick, John Bibby, um, to discuss what their findings were. And it is actually complicated. We don't know. I mean, the, the essential fact is that uh, landlords like their money paid in advance and all benefit systems pay in arrears. So we do not know how much of this is what they call, the Almos call book arrears and how much are real arrears. So we need to get to the bottom of that. Uh, we need to get to the bottom of what are the processing and payment systems issues. We need to understand uh, what existing arrears are. They are much higher than we expected, 50%. Uh, of these figures. That, that is a frightening fact. So we may be looking at a group going into UC which are unusual because they're moving up and down and we need to um, uh, uh, understand and, quali uh, uh, and quantify those factors. My Lords, I'm, I'm Prospect. 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 Um, Lords, I'm grateful to the Labour Minister for commissioning some work on the level of debts. But in view of the impact of rent arrears and other debts on mental and physical health, Will the Minister commission uh, a review of the cumulative impact of the benefit cuts since 2010 on mental and physical, on mental and physical health of claimants? Um, and if the Minister is moving on to other pastures, maybe he could leave a note for his successor <laughs> to commission such a review. <laughs> <laughs> I congratulate the noble lady on her timing of that question. And, um, I, I, I won't answer it. I am not in a position. <laughs> I am not in a position, however, uh, to commission major research on, on mental health today. My, my lords, um, exactly a year ago today, this House voted for a motion in my name, urging the government to delay the enactment of the Universal Credit Waiting Days Amendment regulations until UC was rolled out. The government ignored that, enacted the regulations, and as a result, we now have 79% of people in arrears, because when you make a claim for UC, you wait six weeks to get any money, and then now the first week isn't is completely without any payment at all. My Lords, on that day, the Minister refused to make a statement, but he said, and I quote, I will come back to the House at the appropriate time, column 438. A year down the road, does he feel that time's now arrived, and what's he going to do about it? Yeah. Well, I have uh, said to the House that uh, I'm looking at this, and I'm hoping that later in this year, later this year, we will have some data. And, 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 and uh, I would urge the House not to have too much certainty on this. This is, these, these, this is quite a complicated situation. Uh, there is a lot happening under this, and I am hopeful that I will be able to explain some of this uh, to, uh, to, to noble lords to their satisfaction.